So I didn't expect to run into this. Um, I, I, uh, I, I had pictures searching in the background because I wanted to find a thumbnail. And uh, I ran into something that's actually a really great visual aid for explaining exactly what I was talking about in the last video. Uh, with the NFA and the short barreled rifles, any other weapon, the utter asinine nature of the uh, NFA laws. So, <laughs> this is uh, uh, the Robinson XCR. What the Robinson XC XCR is, is uh, CNN would call it an AR-15. It's not. It's, it's a piston-driven uh, semi-automatic sporting rifle. But it's in pistol configuration. And what you're looking at here is there's no stock. Uh, there's nothing on the forend. It's got a short barrel. Uh, let's see what it says. Uh, it doesn't even tell me what, whatever. That's probably, that's probably like 10 and a half, 12 inches maybe. Um, magazine fed. And this is legally, and you can just buy this, it's a pistol. Um, it requires obviously a background check, but what it doesn't require is the notification to the feds that you own this. <laughs> now, if you stick a grip on it, an angled grip, it's still a pistol. Now you have a place to hold it with two hands, uh, although you could, I guess, grab the magazine. Otherwise, um, we could grab over here. Uh, but now, you know, it's angled grip. Still a pistol. They don't care. Uh, if you put a bipod on it, uh, it, it they, they still don't care. But if you put a vertical foregrip on it, it is now an, considered any other weapon. And there's no stock on it. And it's considered any other weapon, and if you, what are they saying, a $5 tax, 10 months of approval, and if you have a possession of it uh, that's not registered and you don't get that, they send you to federal prison for 10 years and uh, make you pay a quarter million dollars. Uh, because you, instead of sticking this on the front, you stuck this. <laughs> it's it's that stupid. Yeah, yes, it's, it's that dumb. Um. This here is a short barreled rifle. It's the same thing as these, but it's got a stock. In this case, it's a nice folding stock on there. Say it's a two hundred dollar stamp, uh, so it's you know it's it's a lot more money than that. It's about ten month waiting period. Although I've heard they've gotten it down to closer to like six months now. Um, and again, ten years in prison, quarter million dollar fine for having this. Um, because you, you know, all, all this stuff was okay, but but if you if you were able to put a stock on it, uh, and you didn't didn't basically pay the king and get it approved by the ATF and all this other stuff, uh, you just you just go to prison for for ten years, and then you obviously become a felon and you lose all your guns and all your rights and and you have to pay a quarter million dollars, and it's just really stupid. It's no nobody is safer from this law being enforced on anybody. And then there's this. This is the thing that's an arm brace. In this case, it's a, on a side folder. Um, your arm would go through here underneath uh, on the SIG brace. Uh, there's other ones. I think uh, MFG makes one that's like more of a blade. I think I like that better, actually. Uh, I have this on uh, one of my uh, AR pistols. And it's not great, but it kind of it kind of works for what it is. But this is a pistol. Even though you could kind of use this as a stock it's it's almost identical to this except for that this has a nicer stock than whatever this is and th and this is the arm this is the arm brace this is the things that uh the atf was trying to reclassify as as stocks or, or arbitrarily when really they should just stop this really stupid law that is nobody benefits from now if you take this here and you put an angled foregrip on it you're fine but if you put a regular pistol vertical foregrip on it uh now now it's any other weapon or it's it's a sh i think it's because then this now then becomes classified as a stock so now it's it's a uh, it's a short barrel rifle and again you know 10 years in prison two hundred fifty thousand dollar fine it's why why is this the case um uh, I can't again. I can't think of anybody who I who I would say, yeah, it's okay for you to own this and this and this. You better not own that. You better not own that. Better not own that. Or or but you can own this. This is okay because it's a pistol. 
who like there's there's nobody there, there's 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 not a single situation where that that type of distinction is relevant other than the legalese of trying not to get in trouble with the ATF because no, nobody benefits from that there's not anybody out there who you know can have is is unsafe with one and safe with the other like it, it's just it's it's stupid it's just stupid so that's the short version of what I was talking about with some some nice visual aids. Um, there are others. There's there's other types of braces. There's lots of different types of guns you can put. Uh, uh, four ends. Uh, what, what counts as an angled four end versus a gripped four end? That's a little legally hazy. Um, I, I I don't I don't know, guys. It's don't don't take my legal advice on what's legal and what's illegal. But just know it's, you know, I can tell you for sure that's illegal because that's a vertical foregrip and this doesn't have a stock and the barrel's a certain length. But like this guy, if you paid them $200 and waited 10 months and register it, then you could you could put whatever you want on it because it's an SBR. But again, if, if somebody can own this, why can't they own this? What, what, what's what's the... Well, why does the why does the ATF waste their time processing paperwork on something like this? Because a, a bad guy, he's not going to care. He, even if he has this and he can't get a stock for whatever reason, you think that's going to stop him from putting a vertical grip on it or doing the crime he was going to do? Because oh man, I better not put the stock on it because then it'll be a SBR. It'll be an extra felony in addition to the homicide or armed robbery or whatever the hell that they were doing was. It's just it's silly. I'm gonna mention one more thing suppressors these are also on the list i have an example they look like this obviously this is for the goat guns it's to it's scaled it's a tube it's got usually has baffles in it sometimes there's other stuff in it and what that does is it allows essentially the gases that are coming out of the barrel that cause a lot of the noise and the flash mostly the flash to be honest uh, gets captured inside, and then uh, that makes it a lot quieter. Um, if you have a really good suppressor, you can make it uh, hearing safe. Although if you're shooting supersonic ammo, it's never really going to be hearing safe so, because of the fact that that round leaving the muzzle is going to be breaking the sound barrier, and you're going to have a supersonic crack no matter what you do. And the ATF, and this is, again, this is this is part of the same National Firearms Act that was ill-conceived it's pro it's a prohibition era law that makes this nonsense a thing it's the same one that bans these and it's not that they're they're banned you can pay the tax stamp and wait the 10 months and but if i were to take this a real one and stick that on my rifle uh, again 10 years in prison and two hundred fifty thousand dollar fine if i were to be in possession of something if i made it myself and and, and put was in possession of it it would be considered you know that that's 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 a big no-no that's that's 10 years in prison uh it's a felony in federal prison and two hundred fifty thousand dollar fine nobody's safer from having them having enforced that law but that's 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 what they've done now there's a misconception about suppressors the misconception comes from video games in hollywood that it turns you know guns like this let's pretend this is an m4 not a a uh not a um, Air 15 like it's configured to be, uh, but it would look it would look similar in in a movie or a game, and you know all of a sudden it, the guy screws his uh, suppressor on, and now he's a ninja and no one can hear him or see where he's coming from, and the bullets are deadly silent and all you hear is this like little pew kind of sound and you know maybe you hear the bolt click. It's not how it works. It's just not, you know, uh, suppressors are great, uh, but they're great for protecting your hearing. They're not, they're not the stealthy, it, it doesn't allow you to, to shoot a gun silently. It just, that's just not how it works. There's, there's so much other noise involved. Uh, the, this more, basically the closest thing you can get to shooting silently is have something that, uh, doesn't reciprocate. So you don't hear any bolt noise and it's traveling subsonic. And for something like a rifle, uh, if you start getting, you know, like 99 or I think it's like 90 or 95 grain, 5.56, five, and it's subsonic, you you really affect the range. 
and the uh, and often the effectiveness of the round um, and the accuracy. And then that's kind of the quietest you can really get with it. Some other rounds, like especially like uh, pistol rounds, like forty five are a lot are a lot quieter. Um, but you know, like these these big guns, what it, what the suppressor does is it just it makes it easier on your hearing, and that's a good thing. Um, I don't know why the or I should say it's 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 a common misconception again that it turns people into ninjas, but also. Why would you not want um, average citizens having access to suppressors on their standard home defense or recreational um, weapons? Even concealed carry weapons. I mean, a suppressor makes it kind of long and not so concealable, but why would you not want the average person to have that? Because by, by having that, it makes it that much easier for them to communicate and for you to communicate with them. Uh, if I have to use an AR-15 to defend my house because somebody's breaking in, and it ends up I end up having to shoot, um, either I have to have headphones on, which I may or may not have had time to put on, or my hearing's gone at that point. You know, I'll, I'll, I'm going to probably do permanent damage to my hearing, and I'm probably going to um, not be able to hear very well for at least the rest of that night because just from firing one shot, let alone something that turns into a shootout. And what if there's what if there is a misunderstanding? What if the cops are already there and they need me to do something or say something? And now now I can't hear because I've you know there's been there's been gunshots. What if the guy is yelling something and you know he what if he starts shooting and now I can't hear and I, I don't know what's going on. I'd rather him have a suppressor because then I can actually hear what's happening. Um, you know, these mass shooters, you hear, like, reports of gunshots, and people don't know what they sound like, and then people are running all over the place. Well, that's just because it's so loud that it's really hard to get a, get a, uh, a feed on what the hell's going on. And uh, this this is one of these things. Um, I, I don't think, I mean, I should say, I know Hollywood does not really genuinely show you how loud, just how loud uh, guns are. I think there's maybe one movie that I think did it right, and I think it was Black Hawk Down. Um, and Thirteen Hours did did it pretty good too, uh, but it was it was largely the same sound design. But there's like a scene in Black Hawk Down where these two guys are they're defending like a corner, and uh, the guy's shooting something that's in the same caliber as this, only it's a machine gun, and uh, the other guy's saying like it's really loud, it's like hurting him, and he doesn't have earplugs. And they end up in a fight, and they end up stuck together. They basically the guy ends up shooting like right next to the other guy's head deafens him completely and this has been a problem this has been a problem as long as firearms have been in use uh even cannoneers and whatnot that's why they use flag signals you know um if you are uh when i was in rtc uh i did i didn't uh, i wasn't was not able to serve but i did do some of the training and i remember one of the very things that was very distinct about basically the person who acts as your squad automatic rifleman um, or your um, squad on uses the saw or whatever the automatic is, who's going to be laying down a lot, a lot of fire? They're going to have the tendency to kind of just waste all the ammo immediately, because they're going to their adrenaline's going to kick in, and they're going to just start shooting in the in in the general direction to keep the bad guys' heads down. And if you want to maneuver, you got to tell them to stop. And if you want to, and if you want to not, you know, if you want to be able to last the rest of the engagement, uh, you have to tell them basically not to dump the entire thing of ammo. And you would think, oh, you just, okay, stop, okay, shoot. Too loud. It's too loud. You, ha you have to physically, as the lieutenant, basically, or at the very least have your, your NCO, go up and actually kick the guy to get him to stop shooting. Because he can't hear you. If you're giving vital commands, you actually have to, like, you have to get their physical attention, whether either you can see them, and they probably, you can't, you're not going to be standing in front of them if they're shooting, so you have to go up and you have to, you know, nudge them. You got to hit them pretty hard to get them to do what you need them to do, and and that just has to do with the, the volume. Gunfire is very very loud. Combat is very very loud, and it's it's not any different in a home defense or or a uh, you know a public, uh, you know, defensive shooting or anything like it's. Guns are extremely extremely loud, and the idea that the public benefits from 
from this basically guns being deafeningly loud versus when we can suppress them and make them much more manageable. It's not doesn't make them dead silent, but but it makes them a little better. Uh, is is it's not just silly to me. It's it's fundamentally wrong because if you can't communicate, then that that's that's a major disadvantage to um, the good guys. Period. And it doesn't matter whether it's a mass shooting or a home defense situation. Not being able to communicate because of because of hearing loss, when that can be avoided by a simple muzzle device, um, which again it doesn't it doesn't mean it makes it hearing safe necessarily, but it makes it just that much less of a chance of there being a miscommunication, or you having your hearing blown out, or you know, yeah, I mean if if you're what if, what if you're a parent and you're you're a single parent and you're home and you got kids to defend, and if you have to shoot, do you, do you want to not be able to hear your kids crying for help if there's an actual problem? Do you, do you not want to be able to hear what's going on when the cops show up because your 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 eardrums are bleeding because you were in a hallway or, or a small room and you had to shoot? Uh, it's it's very silly that I. I, I that, that that there seems to be this this logic out there that somehow um, banning suppressors makes us safer. It it just it simply doesn't. It it makes things worse. It makes us less safe. Um. It, it's it's very very very. Um, again, I it's like oh I like to blame Hollywood. Yes, Hollywood. Yes, they're big anti gunners, but also. It's not their responsibility to know and to educate the public about how these things work. It's really our responsibility. And I think it just, we just haven't uh, exposed enough people, I guess, to really what the benefits are of actually of uh, suppressors. Because some people, they're, they're just going to be haters and they just, you know, anything Second Amendment, they don't think you should have a gun in the first place, so they don't want to change the suppressor laws. But... The um, even the president he doesn't he doesn't know these people they don't know they they think it's like from a movie where everything is like silent and dingy and, and really it's not it's 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 basically it, it saves you from not being able to communicate after basically shots are fired because your ears aren't blown out or somebody can yell and and you can maybe hear something that's going on instead of uh just hearing the that the incredible s s snapping pop of of a firearm. If you haven't shot a firearm, uh, get a friend because you can't go alone. Uh, go to a gun range and go rent their AR. Just shoot it. You know, put put your headphones on and shoot it, and and just feel how unbelievably loud these things are. And you know, just ask yourself like. Do 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 you think that that's you know? Do do you think that that that's a benefit? You do you think it's it's a safer weapon uh, for the public because it's that much louder, or would it be that much safer for actually being quieter? Um, it's it's very silly. So, one more thing I want to touch on is that well, if the, if suppressors are so great, why aren't the militaries using it? Well, militaries do special forces use them. And militaries have avoided suppressors for the longest time because, one, it's very difficult to machine a precise one. Uh, they do break. There's baffles inside the tube, and if the baffles get misaligned and there's a baffle strike with the round, the whole thing's destroyed and it defeats the purpose, right? Um, there was this myth about it slowing down the velocity of the round. It doesn't do anything to the round um, most of the time. There's, there's exceptions like the MP5 S SD. That's a whole other... That's a mechanical thing. That's a whole other... It, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that when the round comes down and it's traveling through and it goes straight through a suppressor and nothing, no modifications have been made to the barrel. It just happens to be going through the suppressor with the baffles. Uh, that round's still traveling at whatever speed that round's traveling at. So you don't lose effectiveness. What you do, though, is you transfer a lot of heat into the, into the uh, uh, suppressor by doing that. And with old-school materials... 
you you don't you know the suppressors are for the longest time and they really still are they they're not they're consumable i'm just trying to say disposable they're not so much disposable as they're consumable uh it's the same reason why uh machine gun crews carry multiple barrels because the barrel heats up and that's a huge ass piece of metal and then they have to switch it out and let the other barrel cool down and do that now every single soldier trying to do that with a suppressor you've you've now got a problem um with modern technology that's gotten much better and now they uh, they're working on basically having permanently fixed suppressors, either in integral to the barrel or uh, it basically as the muzzle device. There's a, a I think it's a battalion or it might be a division of the Marines or testing basically if they equip every single guy with with suppressed weapons, including the squad automatic weapons and the IAR 27s and the rifles and the S like. Everybody has suppressors who, who can suppress their weapons. And the reason being is that it's for communication. It's basically, okay, we can't make as much noise. You know, it's not as scary, but we can communicate with each other a lot more effectively. And how will that affect um, unit cohesion by being able to, you know, communicate better by not having, you know, a saw shooting and having it be just this flash of, light and and noise and dust and just chaos and literally having to run up and kick the kick the saw gunner to get his attention uh if you don't need to do that how does that change dynamics within it within a uh within a unit and i haven't seen the results i suspect they're good I, and I, I suspect the advantages of having the suppressor are going to be uh above any advantage that you per could perceive by having by being extra scary with the noise because uh, that doesn't, you know, oh, you can deafen the enemy, but like you're deafening yourself too, and it's more important that you communicate. The question is going to be, do these suppressors survive? Because the better a suppressor, the worse it works. And if you're shooting a lot, and now you've got an aluminum can on the end of on the end of your steel barrel, um, it's is it, it's going to have a different warping temperature. Is is that going to affect barrel harmonics once it starts to heat up? Um, it, manufacturing. There, there's a lot of there's a lot of unanswered questions about the hardware, um, and I I think that they're you know if they can get past the hardware issues with basically suppressors being things that can actually sustain automatic fire, um, then maybe you know maybe this will actually become a thing, um, because again they, again you could you could you could integrally suppress the entire barrel. But now you are adding, you know, how much more mass to this, to a rifle that you already, you know, want to make as light as possible because it's an infantry rifle. We'll see what happens with that. So that'll be, that'll be interesting to watch. But um, my point being, the ATF's wasting their time. The NFA is ridiculous. And... Come on, guys. Just, just let us experiment. Let's let us figure out what's best. And 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 this, there's nobody who should have this, uh, who shouldn't have this, who shouldn't have this, who shouldn't or should have this and shouldn't have this. There's nobody. It it, it simply doesn't. That person simply does not exist. So find the people who shouldn't have any of these things, and deal with them accordingly. The rest of us uh, don't. Don't waste our time. Don't don't tell me because if I want to put a vertical foregrip on on something that's short like this, that that's 10, 10 years in prison and a quarter million dollar fine. Why? Who benefits from this? No, nobody benefits from this. The criminals benefit from it because you're wasting your time enforcing this. You know, it's like saying you can have a white car with a blue stripe, but you can't have a blue car with a white stripe. You know. Or you can have a car that goes 100 miles an hour, or you can have a truck that goes uh, 80 miles an hour, but you can't have a truck that goes 100 miles an hour or a car that goes 80 miles an hour. Like, what's what's the point? Like, it's all it's all. This is this is all sort of. I don't want to say the same, but it's it's all similar enough where like I, there's nobody we want to have. There's there's nobody I don't want to have this who then is like oh no it'd be cool if they had this. Or, or vice versa. It doesn't... Nobody benefits. So, that's all. Minor thing. 
Uh, but I wanted to just share that with you guys, especially now that I had visual aids. And, uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys later.